Hey folks, it's time for yet another custom lesson. This one has been requested by yet another one of my Twitch viewers. And if you don't know, I haven't said this enough, I do stream on Twitch, so please check me out there. I would love to have your company because I need friends. Love you guys. In any case, let's get on to the meat and potatoes of this. So this player wanted very specific things and I didn't have as much creativity, but I had a lot of fun working with this nonetheless. As you can see, uh, this person had a lot of humor when it came to the spirits that he desired. So the weapons were purity-based hatchets and then a corrupted Kusarigama. Cores were Kasha, Ongyoki, Scampus. Uh, I actually talked to this person off stream or just like on Discord or whatever, and they wanted some other soul cores, which I'll talk about. So I only could choose one extra soul core. And yeah, let's just talk about what I have chosen this time around. So, let's go with the primary guardian spirit, Tengen Kujaku. Let me get rid of this lovely controller, which I seem to have. So let's start off with the primary one, Kasha. So Kasha, as you guys may know, is very, very powerful. Straight up, a high damage dealer, and it has a phenomenal special effect, life drain yokai ability hit. Getting damage. Or turning your damage into a life regeneration source is awesome, so really good. I also messed around with an anima bonus Scorch enemy. Uh, pick whichever one you want. Whatever anima bonus, anima generator you can find on here, great. Even if it's something like super efficient abilities, great. Or with Kasha, efficient yokai abilities would be pretty great too, because you kill so many enemies with it. So it's really just up to you. But this life drain yokai ability hit is stellar. It is so good. All right, so I would recommend boosting it. Next, I was specifically tasked with working with Scampus. Uh, why Scampus? Because memes, that's why. So yeah, Scampus is actually a very fast core, very low attunement, and I know I've showcased this before. It's not a core you should underestimate. I just literally found a Scampus that, and I turned it into a Phantom Core, and that was it. But if you like, say, using three clay bells of beckoning, well, this is the core for you. You can just keep those things from generating all the anima and keep them lasting longer. So this can be really, really crazy. And then on top of that, anima charge enhanced is not something to be overlooked. It's actually pretty good, believe it or not. Next up, we have Fuki. This was actually requested off stream, you know, just not on this, like not in the initial text that you saw. So I wanted to test out anima bonus inflict ailment, but I was too lazy to boost it up. So any other anima bonus you can find, great. I like Yokai ability key pulse again, you can put that in whatever core you want. But yeah, Fuki is really cool. It's one of those it's one of those cores that's really fast, but a little tricky to use compared to say Aberrant Soldier, but it's really freaking good when used right, and it's awesome. So it's a lot of fun. But again, I was specifically tasked with using this. Now originally I wanted to go more fire based, and you'll see um, as fire based cores in my secondary guardian spirit. So I was thinking of using Suzaku, but I decided to go with something a bit more unique. And Sunny Firestorm had to use Tengen Kujaku in Neo 1, and someone was using in Neo 2, so I figured, hey, let's go with it in, in this time as well. And let's go with this loadout. Tengen Kujaku is very interesting in that you get different bonuses for stances. So I think high stance is attack, mid stance is defense, low stance key recovery. I'm not exactly sure. But you get different bonuses depending on the stance that you're in, and these do stack with other effects. At least the attack one does, I believe, so it could be really cool. They did nerf it because it was too powerful, and yeah, it was stupidly powerful. But it's a really good core. Sorry, really good guardian spirit. Extended elemental weapons is great, so if you decide to use, say, elemental talismans of any nature, get it longer. Anima bonus for elemental attack is great. So if you want to say substitute out one of these cores for Oni Bees, it can be helpful. But you don't really need to. As long as you just have elemental based damage. So in this case, fire, water, or lightning. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah, try it out. And this is based on your weapons, mainly doing the damage as opposed to your cores. Also, this basically has all sense, which is great. Enemy, treasure, Amrita, Kodama sense. Cool. Sweet. And I'll talk about some interesting things with Tengu Kajaku soon enough. Now the secondary guardian spirit I went with was Shinroku. So Shinroku is Honda's guardian spirit. And this very much is geared towards 
lightning damage. Also, it has an anima bonus for an enemy that's electrified. So if you use any lightning based things whatsoever, you get an anima bonus for wailing upon them and you get more lightning damage and you get life drain for doing strong attacks, which can be extra nice. Also, if you're at full health, more anima charge. Pretty cool. But this is one of those niche sort of guardian spirits again, because it's so heavily skewed towards lightning based damage. Now let's talk about the other soul cores that I was tasked with. You can see right now uh, what they are. Shuten Doji was specifically requested. I literally just picked one and I, I don't remember if it starts out as brute. I think it's brute, right? This has anima bonus grapple. Great. That's pretty much it. It happens to have Amrita bonus inflict corrupted, which helps a little bit in terms of boosting gauge, but it's really not the main reason I picked it. Shuten Doji is overall a very fast core. Can inflict fire and can give you a ton of buffs. So it's I think it's Pleiades, Extraction, uh, and then you hit a target, you can get some defense. So it's pretty cool. It's like just pocket buffs. It's, it's very useful. Uh, next, this is one in which I decided to pick Konaki Gigi. I wanted something that helped me do key damage up close, and I went with Konaki Gigi because it's pretty awesome. This is one of those... Soul cores that I find gets underestimated. I'll showcase how to use it well. But what's nice is that if you're using, say, tankier sort of equipment, you can, and sorry, rather equipment that weighs a lot, you can get some damage based off on it. And then if you deplete an enemy's key, you can get higher defense. So it's a very defense, it's like one of those weird defensive counterattack cores. It's pretty cool. Yokai ability key pulse, anima bonus electrified enemy is redundant. I already have it. So get whatever you want on here if you can. Last but not least, I was tasked with picking Ongyoki. So I just found one with Life Drain, Yokai Ability Hit, the Scorch, I guess is nice because I have Shuten Doji, and these others' fixed stats are irrelevant. So Ongyoki is going to be like your pocket smoke bomb. You can use it to escape all sorts of situations. Against normal enemies, they can't see you, they can't touch you, so you disengage from combat altogether. Against bosses, it's just they can't hit you for the time it's there. And so let's now get on to understanding each of these cores, when you can buffer some inputs, how soon can you respond, etc. So I've got hatchets. What I will do is simply just block, see the soonest my character will block, and then that's when you know us how soon you can act. So let's start off with Kasha. Kasha, I can act and do whatever I want as it's spinning. But note, when Kasha is out, I cannot use any other soul core. I can use burst counters, but when Kasha's out, you have to let Kasha ability expire before you can act altogether. Next up is Scampus. Scampus is a very quick core, very quick for canceling as well. And yeah, you can use it for movement. And yeah, you turn into the big old Scampus, which can be hilarious. And all you gotta do with Scampus is this one's a little interesting. As you notice, I'm not actually holding down a square. As long as you are moving, or if you're holding down square, you're in good shape. So it's one or the other. So you can let go of this ability or you can just stop moving the stick. So just bear that in mind. But yeah, it's really good for quick repositions. So use it for that purpose or you can trip human enemies. Buki is the last core. Overall, reasonably quick. It's not super fast, but it's reasonably quick. Now, one thing to note with Fuki is that if you're at close range, you'll whiff it. You can see the projectile spawns right about here. So if a target is closer to you, sorry about the trees, if a target's closer to you, you'll whiff. So make sure you have a little distance. So my advice would be just, you can do things like boulder breaker and just shoot your target and it'll work. Or even just a dodge back and then a shot will work. Now, what about Shinroku? So let's see the soonest I can block with cores like Shuten Doji. Pretty quick. All right, what about Konaki Gigi? Reasonably quick. And then Ongyoki. Ongyoki is similar to the Scampus in that... Okay, so you can see the animation overall ain't too slow. Uh, Ongyoki is interesting in that if you stand still, as you can see, my anima is depleting. And then if I start moving, my anima depletes even faster. So if you just want to stay in place, you can. And all you got to do is just let go. And it's very similar to the campus in that respect. As long as there's motion or as long as there's motion, you'll keep it activated. But it's a little different in that if you just, you can just stay in place. Unlike the campus in which you cannot. 
So it can be really cool. See, this campus, you're always moving. So once you stop moving, it's over. But all right, let's showcase some Yokai Shift things before I continue onwards. Oh, could you not? All right, let's do Yokai Shift. So remember, Kasha takes a while. But what I like, so here's one thing I want to illustrate with Tengen Kujaku. So the Guardian Spirit, the effect can, I think it's random. I thought it was stance dependent. So you got lightning there, right? Fire there. And water there. It, it doesn't seem to have a specific order. See, water came back up again. Lightning. Fire. And lightning. I don't know if there's any like rhyme or reason to it, but it's basically like luck of the draw. You either get fire, water, or lightning. So you have the potential to mess with all sorts of elements. So what I like to do is I like to see which element is actually going to be applied first. So let me get back into Yokai Shift. I like to see what element's going to be applied first before I decide whether or not I want to use Kasha. So Yokai Shift to the ability. All right, I use Fuki. Shoot a projectile, throw out Kasha. Now you can see I can attack. Um, Scampus is just, in my opinion, you use it when you want to charge up your Amrita so you can like keep firing it over and over again. So yeah, it, it can be pretty rad for that purpose. All right, let's kill this schmuck. And then I'll showcase brute stuff. So when it comes to brute, Brute I find to be quite fun in comparison to Phantom stuff. Phantom stuff can be very powerful. But here's what you can do. Not that. Alright, so... Lightning and fire, right? Charge up. And then here's something cool. One, two, three, burst attack. Oh, I need to actually hit it instead of kill it. Showcase it again. One, two, three, burst attack, Konaki GG. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, and then you have Ongyoki if you need to escape. Also, one thing about it, you might notice my character is actually glowing. And why is that? What is happening? Actually, let me actually deactivate Yokai Shift and just show you. Hey, hit me, man. No stagger. I'm not getting staggered, dude. And why is that? All right, let's see. I should get started getting staggered momentarily. Yep. So what's going on? I am actually having the unflinched effect courtesy of the Guardian Spirit Talisman. Guardian Spirit, Guardian Spirit attack effect. Oh, come on, dude. Come on, dude. All right, let's breathe on you. Let's go. Thank you, Confusion. Okay, so the unflinching status effect is as follows. Let me see where I can shoot. Let me find it first. Not impervious. You're immune to elemental status ailments. Unflinching! Enemy attacks will not stagger you. Great! That's really good. So you have that extra benefit with Shinroku. Speaking of other benefits, I don't believe I mentioned this, so let's showcase each of the stance bonuses to each of the yokai abilities. So a low stance, I get key recovery and movement. Really? Mid stance, defense. No, 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 no don't do that. Oh, I'm absorbing, I'm, I got movement because of Kasha, my bad. I was confused. Okay, and then high stance, So this is this can be buff central, okay? Low stance, mid stance. Wait, wait, give me my low stance, dude. And then get more buffs. All the buffs, dude. Look at that, six buffs whenever I desire. So yeah, you you got a lot of buff potential here. In any case, let me show some cool combos. Some things you may not have thought of. So Kanaki Gigi. 
the range on it is very low. What is interesting about it is that you can block certain attacks too. Didn't really showcase that well. Come on, get up, please. Come on, get up. Do some normal attacks. See, it kind of blocked his attack and then it knocked him over, right? So that can be really cool. But now I'll showcase some ways you can make sure that you actually get hit off with it. I'm going to kill this guy just to make sure it resets. Alright, so here, check this out. Ready? I want to make sure you hit human targets and do this. Pull them! Bonk. Pretty cool, huh? Works with any pull. Ah, hit your head. Of course the whole knockback effect won't apply as much. But you can make sure you get into that sweet range, man. It's so dirty. Here, here, let's try it again, because it's fun. Come over here! Bonk! Nice try. Here, let's try it again. Oh, no, you're dead. So yeah, you can, tr you can do that. It's a, it's a cool little thing you can work with. So Kusa pulls, pulls work really well. Pull yourself to a target. Bonk! Oh! Oh, isn't that sweet. So yeah, you, you've got that you can use, and it can be a lot of fun. Kanaki GG after a brute attack can be really cool too. Jutan Doji can be super spicy as well. Ow. But yeah, you, you wanna... Kanaki GG can feel bad when it misses, but when it hits, oh man, it's so good. It does a good amount of key damage, and against blocking opponents is even more valuable. Now let's showcase some things involving... Uh, these soul cores with Penguin Kujaku setup. Dodge away. Ah, you got shot. Trip you over. What's good? Oh, you jerk! Here, oh, let's let's try this again. Come here. Bonk! <laughs> it's so dirty, man. I'll come down. Yeah, it's 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 pretty troll. I, I I cannot tell you how satisfying it is to just be like, hey, get over here, bonk. <laughs> it's so dumb. Renegade dragon, back out, go back in. Try to trip him over, fail miserably. Shoot him on the ground, burn to death. And keep in mind, I didn't even throw out Kasha, so it's like extra dirty. Let's showcase the whole package. Alright, what's up? What's up? Back out, shoot him in the face. Yokai shift, what's good? Alright, let's see what Tengen provides. So let's do the shot. Ooh, fire. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's okay, you're dead though. Okay, now let's go with brute stuff. Because brute stuff's fun. Come on, more things. I want to do all the things. I haven't even really showcased much weapon based play. Don't worry, I will. What's up? Bonk. Ooh. Yes. All right, let's get super buffs. All the buffs. All the smash. Oh, you're going to die, aren't you? Now then let's bring you back up. Guess what? You can't stagger me, punk. Attack me, dude. Oh, yeah. What I like to do after a fang break. Man, that looks so awkward. Is you shoot in doji because I know that'll usually hit. One, two, three, four, bonk. Tag me, dude. Get that fire. Let's cook you. Yes. Yeah, a lot of fun. All right, let me show you some weapon-based tactics before I get onto the gameplay showcase. Because your pet shift is fun and all, but what are some things you can do? So. With Kusari Gama, you are going to be controlling how you are relative distance-wise you are to the target, which falls in a very similar category as it does with the hatchet. So you're going to mix these elements together. So Deadly Mark, for example, into, say, Grease Lightning can be extra spicy. So let's get, let's get him out here. And then you can do Flash Attack. 
So all that good business. Let's do spiked wall into a Kusa flash attack. Please attack me. Very nice. Create even more distance when you want. It can be pretty rad. Let's showcase this against the Yoki. The few things that you can do. Don't forget, sheet swaps are your friend when you're using hatchets. Alright, what you got? I love doing the sheet swaps, it's so good. Very nice. I'm uncomfortable, I'm gonna back out. Spiked wall, it's a flash, let's do a Add this in and boom. Pretty neat, right? Let's showcase all this stuff one more time. So again, you've got Kusa pull pulls, which will help you a lot. Create some distance because I'm a little nervous. Woo! Alright, let's see what else I can think up real quick. Back out. I really like creating extra distance. It can feel pretty rad. Oh, that was unfortunate, wasn't it? Not to worry. It's dead. So there's quite a lot, but I think just working with repositioning yourself all the time with Kusari Gama and Hatchets can feel really good. So, like Deadly Mark, Renegade Dragon, and then after this I'm gonna Boulder Breaker into Wild Surge. It feels awesome. It really does. Then do that. So yeah, you're gonna have all these elements of range really mixed into your play and constantly controlling where you are can be really awesome with Kusari Gama. And now that you got tools like, dude, I, got, I just gotta show it again, it's so awesome. <laughs> when you've got tools like this, <laughs> you got tools like that, you can feel mighty dirty. I, I, I can't help it, man. No, no, come here, man. Oh, no, 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 come on, don't get revenge. Yeah, that's right, you died. No, I, I gotta do it one more time, man. It's <laughs> come here, come here, it's okay. Bonk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny, man. Oh, okay. All right, let's put him out of his misery, man. I, I'm sure his head hurts by now. Or does it? <laughs> okay. I think that's enough. But you'll have a lot of fun mixing with these elements. And I think with these soul cores, you have a lot of power. Again, as a reminder, you have access to like a bajillion buffs because of Kasha, Tengen Kujaku, uh, Shuten Doji, and so yeah, you get you got pocket buffs to access at all times. So this can be a lot of fun. In any case, let's get on to the gameplay showcase. I will see you guys in a bit. All right, so this time I'm actually doing something a little different. It's not a scroll. I'm actually in a, the mission against all comers. So you know the second to last wave? Yeah, I'm doing that. Since what was requested, was me fighting Konaki Gigi and Itsumare, and I just didn't want to do a scroll that basically showcased the same gameplay. So, in any case, I'm just trying to kill the Harinobos with Shuten Doji, which really does help. And now we're on to this good old diaper rash, baby rage, grandpa crap, whatever. So, the objective is going to be being on the lookout for a lot of the animations in which he quite literally runs you over. I got a nice jump over him, and now I'm just anticipating this whole fancy thing and trying to keep my distance so that I can plan things accordingly. And I'm gonna go for a confusion proc. Oh man, that could have been pretty bad. And so I'm applying as many elements as possible, then I throw out Kasha to just murder it mercilessly. So, Kanaki Gigi is done because I have access to quite a bit. So, Itsumade is quite difficult, as you guys are very much aware of. So the process is going to be this. With Itsumare, I need to be on the offensive while it's on the offensive. And I do have quite a few things that can assist me. Oh, I was hoping I could have broke his chest there, but no luck. 
and so I'm just I'm trying to take advantage of the distance properties of both of the weapons while staying close at the same time. Fortunately, I have things like Kasha to assist me with damage output and pretty close to depleting key. Now let's see, yeah, I'm right about to. So Itsumare is now dead. But it's not over if you've played this mission. So next up, I have to fight Kinky. So that's just what I'm dealing with here. And so with Kinky, ooh, nice. Phantom Burst counter timing. I'm hoping to inflict purity as quickly as I can. I'm waiting for him to do his butt slam. Yep, just throw out Kasha, because why not? And then, all right, let's get that thing out of key, because I've got it confused. And I believe I'm about to reapply confusion. Am I? No, it doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, I use Kanaki GG itself to help deplete its key and then get that kill. Next up is Own Gyoki. Own Gyoki ain't a walk in the park if you've fought this enemy before. I'm able to break his weak spot on his head, and then I just need to be wary of the fact that while he does have long animations that he commits to. These animations are really deadly. Uh, I use the wrong, well not really the wrong, but I didn't use the best burst counter for that scenario. Not to worry though, he's low on key, so I need to optimize as much pressure as I can. And I get pretty close to depleting him out of key. Ooh, nice. Oh, I didn't go for the shifling gravel, that sucks. And then Ongyoki is nearly done. Oh, now it's dead. Next up, Suiki. Suiki is not easy either. She has crazy long animations. It's like dealing with Yasha except on steroids, right? And so fortunately she's weak to fire, so Kasha works really well there. And then, oh man, you do not want to get hit by her. So I was actually really hesitant. And yeah, I go back in after being hesitant and then I have very low health. And so I'm just trying to find an opening for her to do a burst attack. And so I am quite wary. And so I'm just kind of seeing when she's going to throw it out while throwing out my hatchets, of course. And then there you go. Now I feel a little bit more confident that I can go in. I was hoping Scampus would get the kill. Uh, unfortunately, the kitty wasn't able to do its job. But last but not least, it's time for Fuki. And it's a cursed one at that, a red one. So this is going to be extra scary. And imagine if I fail here, I got to fight all those enemies again. Oh no, I lost key. All right, let's see what's going on. Trying to break the horn, excellent. Got a lot of max key damage, one. Uh, I say one there because usually you can go up to three different attacks. And then I shot Fuki. Oh boy, oh, oh, I whiffed the burst counter. That would've been so cool. We both do, <laughs> we both do whirlwind, which is kind of funny. But now I'm just trying to make sure I deplete his key as quickly as possible because I do not want him to have even an inch. And so I'm very close to doing so. But man, he's so evasive. Ooh, thank you, Konaki GG. I was trying to activate my Yokai Shift, but it didn't work out. So I was like, dang it, I missed an opportunity. Sometimes, you know, buttons can get quite troublesome to work with. Fuki is halfway dead, though, so that is good. I'm very close to getting him out of key once again. And again, just trying to manipulate as much distance as I can. The Fuki cannon shot worked beautifully. Let's pop Yokai Shift. And let's see what Tengen Kujaku will provide me. This time it provides me water, and then I throw out Kasha, boom, dead. That's it. So maybe that wasn't the most amazing showcase, but yeah, kicked his butt. Thank you guys for watching. Hope this was helpful, and I will see you guys next time.